as usual, it is such an honor and such a treat for me to be here, and I'm excited that I get to speak at the first Sunday of the month. And the theme for this month is enthusiasm. So I ask, I know it's already been done through the opening song, through singing of Raising the Veil, through the meditation, through the opening prayer, that we've all been invited to lift that veil of separation between the God of our understanding, whatever name we give to this power, this force, this energy that embraces us, that has life through us. And I ask you for a moment to open your inner ears and your inner eyes to enthusiasm. And what does enthusiasm mean? It comes from the Greek, entheos. It means in God, in the divine, in connection with all that is, connected with love. And you know, I've said this before when I've been here, but I'm always so struck when I speak. I focus on the theme for the, for the month. I focus on it for many, many months. And so I was struck when we were singing Use Me today that one of the lines is, and God needs us to shine its light as me, as you. God does not exist other than through each one of us. It is not a presence out there, although it is out there and all around us. And it is in our very breath, this energy of love, life, forgiveness, gratitude, blessings, joy, it is even in the pain and the suffering that wakes us up and gives us the opportunity to open our hearts, to open our minds, to allow ourselves to feel the support of the floor beneath our feet, to feel the support of the seat beneath our bodies, as Mary so eloquently spoke of in the opening prayer. So in thinking about this, I did go to Ernest Holmes because he is the, um, the founder of religious science and new thought is religious science is one expression of new thought. And he said, live, think and act as though the entire nature of this life were delivered to you individually. So wherever you may be today, filled with enthusiasm for life, or if your enthusiasm seems to have been seemingly drained, and you feel as though you're in the shadows, you're in the tunnel and you don't see, you're actually in the spiral of the tunnel and you don't see the light at the end of the road. That depth of feeling, that strength, the power of that feeling is enthusiasm knocking against a place in you where there's been a constriction a constriction in thought, a constriction in a trauma that's unhealed. But know that enthusiasm, God, love, never leaves you. So I titled today's message months ago as Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> Actually, that's a little wrong. What is curbing your enthusiasm was actually the question. And so I started thinking about what sources am I going to look to to expand my perception of enthusiasm. So I went to a source that I am certain, I really feel as though I could say this with 100% certainty, that all of us have been influenced by 
And the source is tell a vision. Because isn't that what TV does? It tells us a vision. And so for the past two weeks, I've been watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> and for those of you who are familiar with Larry David, and if you're not familiar with him, you can see his work, you may have seen his work through Seinfeld. Uh, there are so many ways this guy's, it appears as though his enthusiasm is curbed because he takes things very personally. He is not impeccable with his word. Those of you, those of you who are familiar with, um, with the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. He, um, he worries about a lot of things all the time. But what I was struck with when these seem like the negative things that block our enthusiasm, he lies. He can't keep a secret. He just blurts out anything. He does all of that with great conviction and enthusiasm. He's not wishy-washy about it. He gives it his all. And so take a moment and just think about what is it that you give your all to that feels as though you are turning off the faucet of loving energy. Fear is one of those things. And I have to say that when I'm awake enough, I'm grateful when I become aware of fear. Because it is the invitation for greater enthusiasm in my life. Yet, when I get into the story of what happened to me and who did me wrong or how I'm wrong, that is when I'm turning off the faucet. It isn't the energy of fear itself. It is the story that I am making up. Yeah, making up. Even though it may look like I have a lot of evidence. You know, she really said this and this really happened and it was really on this date. But that energy, that power is something that animates us, gives us life. And what is the direction that you are directing your enthusiasm in? Now, here's a real important thing, and that is, if during this month when the focus is enthusiasm and you choose to consciously be more enthusiastic about love, about being love, about giving love, about receiving love, here's something you can be pretty certain of. All the ways you are not being, giving, and receiving love are going to surface. And they're surfacing by your invitation. They're not surfacing as evidence from the outside that I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving, nothing ever works for me, even though those thoughts may go through your mind for a moment. So acknowledge those thoughts. Say to those thoughts, thanks for sharing. I choose being enthusiastic. I choose being loving. And if it's too challenging to shake it off, vent to someone and really be able to discern the difference between venting and gossiping, or venting and complaining, or venting and proving that you're right, life stinks. Because there is a difference between the two. The venting is to open up the space. You know, we want vents that are clear, in the summer so that air conditioning come, come through on those really hot days, and in the winter so the warmth of heat can come through. So venting is a valuable thing to do. And begin to notice how is it that I curb my enthusiasm? Am I thinking about the past and the future all the time? 
and not feeling the support of the floor beneath my feet, the earth beneath my feet every single moment. Do we gossip? Is that a way we curb our enthusiasm? What is it that we do that keeps us from the awareness that each one of us is a mighty expression of love in the world? What is it that keeps us from celebrating the gifts of our time here on earth? What is it that holds us back from expressing our love? Is it fear of being rejected? Is it fear of it not being met? Is it fear of feeling as if I express my love that then I'll be a burden and I'll have to feel this way every single moment? So as I thought about what are the ways we curb our enthusiasm, what came to my mind is a chapter in, um, in The Wholehearted Life, which is a book that I love, because I wrote it. Um, but So I'm not curbing my enthusiasm there. I did have a moment standing up here. I don't know if you're supposed to be quoting yourself. Um, but it's, uh, it's week 51 of 52 weeks, and the title of this chapter is Be the World's Greatest Lover. And, you know, we have so many... Um, in so many ways, we have such a limited idea of what it means to be a lover. You know, certainly, immediately pops into my mind a sexual connotation. And what does it mean to be a lover of life? What does it mean to be a lover of the people we encounter? What does it mean to be a lover when somebody is complaining to us over and over again about what seems to be the same story we've heard for years? Maybe compassion is what it means to be a lover then. Maybe it means to be a mirror for someone and to say, I know you're hurting. You've been in this place for a long time. Is there any way I can support you right now in this very moment? And so I encourage you during this month, when the focus is enthusiasm, to say yes to being the world's greatest lover. Now I know, because Jacqueline told me that last week she mentioned that I give out charms. And I have the greatest charms that I left in Amagansett this morning. <laughs> so, um, so I came up with a great idea that I'm very enthusiastic about during the meditation. And the idea is, here's the truth. You know, some of you may be familiar with medicine bags. It's a native, uh, a, 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 a native indigenous practice. You know, you carry your power objects with you to give you strength. But the truth is, this is the medicine bag, our bodies. And so I ask that the charm that you endow this month is your heart. So I'd like you to place your hands over your heart and allow yourself to feel the beating. Allow yourself to feel life moving through you. You may want to close your eyes. It's not necessary. And for a moment, connect with this charm that's in you. And identify a quality. Enthusiasm would be a good one this month. That you ask your heart, this charm within you, to serve as a reminder of. And you agree that whenever you are reminded, either through the beating of your own heart, through seeing a heart, 
that you will heed the call and you will allow God through you, as you, to express because you are, we are, mighty expressions of love. And I'm going to leave you with, I'm very moved by this, um, by the prayer of protection. Because it really captures for me um, what it means to be enthusiastic and how God and love, that energy, that force, is with us at all times. It was written by James Dillard Freeman in the 1940s. He's a, um, in addition to being a poet and a philosopher, he was also a unity minister. And he was asked to write a poem of protection because war was being fought. And this is the poem, the prayer. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever we are, God is. And so isn't it interesting that a prayer is written by a man whose last name is Free Man to remind us that wherever we are, God is. Wherever we are, enthusiasm lives. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.